we are going to dig into dependent drop down lists and deal with an interesting type of problem. It's funny that my friend and fellow Excel MVP Layla Garani posted a video on this, but her data, her source data was a little bit different than mine and she did a solution in Google Sheets. So I will leave you a link so that you can check out what she did. Here's the problem that came to me. We've got categories and we've got details. Then there are the five rows where the dependent dropdown lists need to be. We've got this dropdown list. It says meat. Go over here. Ham, ostrich, steak, turkey. But we can go change it to appetizer. And then there are our appetizer options. I've done things like this before. In those situations, I'd set up an appetizer lookup range, fruit lookup range, meat lookup range, dessert lookup range. But what if things aren't that stable? So I'm going to go down here and add some more data. Now we have the new category salad and we've got another appetizer and another dessert. Go over here. Ah, the lobster puff showed up, the new appetizer. Go down here and we have salad, the new category. That's what we want. But when I was sitting with this problem, I was thinking, damn, this is like trying to put socks on a rooster. I don't know how we going to do this. I'm going to give you some thinking time. You think about how you might do this. Let's do this and see how your thoughts match against what I'm about to do. Category. Make it bold. Go down here. Equals unique. Double click. Right here. Enter. Next, I'm going to highlight here. Go to data. Data validation. List equals, and where is that unique function? It is in K5 equals dollar sign K dollar sign five hashtag. Okay, let's see. We've got all of the categories in all of the sales. Yes, we do. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky and here is what unlocked it for me. We might add more categories, more details, but how am I going to make sure that everything gets pulled in? Then I realized this person has five rows. All right. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Do you see what I'm about to do? Let me pick something right here. Pick fruit. I am going to filter the five positions. I am not going to try to filter categories. Here we go. And here is a section that I call the guts. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. But I'm going to hide this so that we have some room. Hide. OK, now we can see. Equals filter. Open parentheses. Filter what? Filter the detail, comma, where the category is equal to the value in F5. 
Look at that. And now this detail needs a drop down list. Data validation list equals P6 hashtag. And the hashtag, we're talking dynamic arrays now. And I'm telling the drop down list to pick anything in the array that starts at the cell P6. Here we go. Click OK. And there it is. Banana. Delete that. Go back over here. Pick dessert. You see that flipped to ice cream. Our only option is ice cream. But let me add a dessert. Blonde brownie. Check that out. It showed up as an option. Is it in our drop down list? Yes, it is. So it's tied to the position and not the category. So I need to do this four more times. Equals filter. Open parentheses. Filter what? Filter this where this is equal to the category selected in position two. Enter. We got calc because there's nothing there. But if we select something, OK. And then the dependent drop down list. One more time. Data. Data validation. List. Equals Q6 pound sign. OK. Check it out. Here are our options with some ostrich. So I'm going to fill in the rest of these. Everything's filled in. Let's move all of this over into the guts section. Let's add more data. Go over here. Slide it in. We've got salads now. And salad is available and we want pomegranate chicken. There are situations where if I change salad to appetizer, pomegranate chicken is still there. But I've done videos on this type of thing already. And so you can figure out how to put the socks on that rooster.